Hey, my name is Lucas. And my name is Jacob. The Bro Show Podcast. Welcome back to the podcast. This week's episode is drastically different than last week's. Oh yeah, we're sober now. But thanks for enjoying the drunk episode. We lived yeah. our dream of being so drunk that we don't even remember what we said, really. I know, watching that back editing, it was actually painful. It was really embarrassing. Like, it's fun watching other people be drunk, but when it's yourself you're watching, you're like, I am the most annoying person in the world. Yeah, I feel like the thing about it is that, like, nothing, like, I wasn't watching it and being like, oh my gosh, what I said was so horrible. It was more just like, I just don't like how I acted. I get what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. But you know, it was a good 21st birthday episode. Yeah, it was great. We might do it again another time. Oh, yeah, we should also do a high episode Ooh. where Jacob just gets so high. And you I'll be like, get so. High? Um, I haven't like smoked weed for so long that I feel like I would be like, I'd have like a panic or something on the pod. Yeah. Maybe I should though. Yeah, I feel like maybe that will happen. I don't know. Okay, that'd be funny though if I was sober and you were high, just like. But I feel like it, it'd be weird because then I'd just be like. So high, and you'd just be like, uh, what are you saying? <laughs> and then would you feel like self-conscious? You'd be like, he's not high. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe it will happen. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, I was going to say, um, just a warning, guys. My stomach does hurt right now. Okay. I think I had um spoiled chicken for lunch. What? Like, did you cook the chicken? Or? Like, I'm making um ground chicken tacos. Okay. So I cooked the ground chicken, and it's been like five days, which that's fine according to Google, but I felt a little bit queasy. Maybe it's just a coincidence. Have you ever noticed, though, when you make chicken, though, when you store it in the fridge and, like, days later open it, it smells so fucking bad? Oh, yeah, there's salt and chicken is one of those foods. Salt and soups, if you put them in a, store them in the fridge and then open them, it actually smells like you've opened a can of ass. I know. And they always say that the human body and, like, nose and shit has evolved to be able to smell if something is rotten. But if you even have chicken in the fridge for a, a day, it smells rotten. So I don't believe... I don't necessarily believe that. Yeah. But isn't that actually cool that we can tell? Like, we're just, it's like an instant. Or like with milk. Yeah, like they always say, like, yeah, don't don't believe the best buy dates. Don't believe the due dates. Just give it a good whiff and you can decide. Yeah, I've um, ate in a few overdue things. I feel like um, I'm not, I won't say like eat overdue things, but I feel like I've ate overdue things and it's been fine. Like, I've, yeah. I think I've drank milk like a week past the overdue date. But if it has chunks, then that's fucking disgusting. Yeah, because even with shredded cheese, for example, it always says on the bag, use within three to five days of opening. It's like, bitch, you can use that like a month later. Oh, the just- biggest annoying one is this soy milk that I get. Or any soy milk. Even like the silk soy milk. It says, after opening, use within 10 days. It has like six <laughs> soy oh, yeah. So it actually wouldn't be difficult to use it in 10 days, but I don't use it every day. So if I even if I have it, I've had it open for literally a month, and I still drink it, and I smelled it, and I was like, I don't think anything. I, no, I didn't feel any bad or anything. With shredded bad. cheese, I just give it a good look, give it a good smell. Obviously, if there's mold, throw it away. But that hasn't really ever happened to me, so I'm just keep it. Yeah, I I'm not to the level yet, but I could see why I get to that level one day where there's a piece of bread, there's mold on the bread, but I cut that mold off and still eat. It. <laughs> I feel like the only reason why I do that is just because it's like, I'm not going to waste this. Oh, yeah. Plus, <laughs> but I've never done that. Like, I know people do, though. Does mold even actually make you sick? Obviously, it does. Wait, you, it does, right? No, I remember one time growing up, I had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and I was eating it on the couch, and then my dad was like, our, our dad, not my dad. We have the same dad. As our, we know. Our dad was like, oh, my God, there's all this mold on there. There's all this blue mold on. I just didn't even notice. I was that oblivious, but I'd already eaten some of it, so. I, I feel like and I was thing, fine. I think it's different, probably. Like, I feel like. Maybe you can get away with eating a little bit of mold. Just like how you can get away with like, like, you know, how you can probably get away with like doing this jug a few times. But then if you do it this many times, you might actually have a heart attack. I don't know. Is it like, that's what I was I'm not endorsing drugs, but I'm assuming that's how it works. Even with like my strange addiction, when like there was that girl addicted to drinking bleach and it's like, she's still alive. She was like in her forties. It's like she, I thought if you drank bleach within two weeks, you're dead. It turns out like you can eat all that stuff. Just kidding, do not do it. Do not try that at home and sue me. Yeah, because on the back of Bleach, it says if you drink this, call this one number, like the poison hotline. I bet she was just living. What? Like, there's so many weird My Strange Addictions. Like, one of my favorite ones was the intro was all these stacks of pizza, and this guy would eat, like, pizza for every single meal. Do you remember that one? I don't think I've watched that one. I've only watched the Bleach one, the girl who eats drywall. There's a guy who's, like, addicted to balloons. 
in like kind of a sexual yeah. way. I feel like those videos act no those shows those that that TLC show actually like it reminds me of YouTube so much because oh yeah I remember watching My Strange Addictions back in like 2012 and I feel like it did remind me of just like a YouTube show like in um. a way what's kind of just like cheesy like I don't know if this is if this is true but sometimes I just felt like they were fake. But I still enjoy watching them. Wasn't Trisha on episode Trisha Paytas? Because she was addicted to um, tanning her skin, right? Yeah, because like she would go to all these tanning salons on one day. It, like so, she would go in tanning buds, though, right? Yeah, because I think um yeah tanning salons they only let you come a certain number of times because like they don't want you to get skin cancer. Like once a week, do you know? I don't know. Have you ever even been in a tanning bed? No, but they've um um okay. I actually this is the first time I've ever seen a tanning bed, and I think for some reason in my mind they've scared me since. When we were kids, we used to get our hair cut at this one place. And mm. I remember going in the back once. And there was a tanning bed. And I think it scared me so much because it looked like you were trapped in there. And it just was <laughs> not. Probably also Final Destination. Yeah, I, I probably had watched that at the time. I didn't realize it. But yeah, it just like it was scary to me. Oh, yeah. yeah but I've never been in one. I associate them with like chicness. Oh, because I like grew up in like Pamela Anderson. Yeah, because when I was like a ten years old, I remember like my older sisters would go tanning and like they would tan like before prom and stuff. And I was just like, that is so fucking cool. It reminds me of MTV and like yeah, that's what I mean. The early two thousands like, or something. Yeah, so I did go tanning a few times. Like, I remember like when my older sister would go and I was like fifteen, I'd be like, I'm gonna go too. And it was I loved it, like being in a little tanning bed. Like it, I wouldn't do it anymore because I don't want to get skin damage, but. Like, I wish it wasn't bad for your did skin because you it was amazing. Did like, you ever so do, nice. like, a tattoo? No. Oh, my God. That was so cool when people put, like, a little heart um, sticker on, like, their stomach, and then that part would be pale and the rest would be tan. <laughs> that was so cool. It's, weird that the, it's not weird because it's proven in science, but it's interesting that, like, 15 years ago, I feel like so many people used them. It's what, but mm. nowadays they're like banned in countries and shit. Yeah, I think Australia has them banned. But in like the 2000s, were people even saying like, this is horrible? It's kind of like, even like vape. P- everyone's saying it's horrible, but that doesn't stop it. Stop yeah. millions of people from doing it. So were people saying it's bad in the I think 2000s? everyone, like people knew about skin cancer and stuff, but for some reason it wasn't just like, that. it wasn't that big of an issue. Like it was like, I mean, it was an issue, but people like let their teens and stuff go tanning. Wait, how does that shit work now that I think about it? There's so many instances where everyone knows it's bad. Everyone's okay with it though. But then it comes to a tipping point where general society decides it's actually bad to do this. And we're actually going to look down upon you if you do this. Oh, like I, yeah. I feel like smoke, with smoking cigarettes, that, that happened like probably like 15, I don't know how many years ago, but like. That happened with cigarettes. Mm. Happened with tanning buds. Like, and yeah, then I don't know because obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm a, in the early 2000s. They obviously knew sun gives you skin cancer. Yeah, but I feel like the way it'd be really bad. Like, I remember I had a friend in high school who her mom had a tanning bed in the basement, and like, I feel like that is when it gets dangerous because I think 10 minutes in the tanning bed equals one hour in the sun. So like, you know, she was down there taking 45 minute naps. Like that is when you ruin your skin. Was it cozy though? I never went. It sounds in it. cozy. Oh, her, like they just a tanning bed in yeah, general? Yeah, because it's so Oh, warm. it was so nice. Like, you just lay in there. It's so warm. You're, like, kind of sweating. And it's just, like, you're in this, like, little tunnel of just pure sun. And there's even standing up ones. I never did a standing up one, but... I do love just laying in the sun. The best thing ever is laying in the sun and taking a nap. Oh, yeah. Why would... Okay, whenever you go in the sun, um, you're so effing tired after. Like, whenever I, I go know, in the... I know, like a good tired. Whenever I'm, like, so... At the pool, or whatever. I'm like so tired after. Oh Dead. yeah. What I should do though, since I loved since I loved tanning beds so much, I should transfer that to doing saunas because saunas are actually good for you. Mm. Isn't it good to go in a sauna like three times a week or some and shit? And it's like um, it's the same feeling of like warmth. But I want to lay down in a tube sauna. Is there a tube sauna? That ha- is that I don't well um think about like that one thing where you go in a frozen tube that but with warm shit. Wait, what frozen tube? Chirotherapy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, dude, that, there might be something like that, but with warm shit. You also have to start doing that. <laughs> you um, put yourself in boiling water for like, three minutes. <laughs> that would actually like give you skin. I should. So I just wanted to announce to everyone that daylight savings is over. Oh, yeah. This has been like so many years people have said, let's cancel it. But it actually is happening. I know. Like, I'm <laughs> so thankful that and apparently it hasn't fully passed, but apparently it's one of the few things where... Everyone in the government was like, yeah, we're on board. Like, get it out of our lives. It's no matter what political party you're in, cancel it immediately. I like, 
hold that people like giving like evidence to why it should be canceled. Like there's more um, car wrecks in the week of it happening. That's crazy. And I didn't know it was like that. There was intense. like a few other things. Like even more heart oh, attacks. There was like more heart attacks that week too. And that's like, crazy. Stress. That's why I was watching this podcast and they said like that's how you can tell. Like that's how it, you can. It's provable that sleep is so valuable. Because one less hour of sleep and there's more heart attacks. I know. I didn't even, like, I, I guess everything probably connects in your body, but I didn't know that heart attacks correlate to sleep. Oh, uh, maybe that's just, I don't, I don't know. Maybe someone was like, these people were like already going to have one, but like just pushed it faster or something. Yeah, more stress in their body. But I am excited for daylight savings to be over. Yeah, it's one of those things where everyone's always been like, yeah, we understand it's for farmers, but like. We love farmers. Like, thank you so much. But just adjust your own schedule. Well, Maybe like, don't adjust ours. I remember hearing, I don't even know the facts behind it, but um, that it was for the olden days anyway. Oh, and they didn't have lights on the tractors and shit. Yeah, it was like nowadays they do. But any yeah. farm was watching. I can feel mad about it. I don't know why. But um, it's over. And I'm, I'm just excited for 10 years from now where people act all nostalgic about it. Oh, Remember the days when we had daylight savings and everything was so simple? It's like there was a, a war going on in a pandemic. I know. That's the thing is that like... I feel like I realized that with age, like, like the the moment right now, even if you don't enjoy it, I just, you just have to know that literally like 10 years, even like two years from now, you're going to be like, wow. I even just I like thought in any, any age, I, I know that people 80 years old are looking back to when they were, um, 76 being like, wow. I don't know that even is like, I swear people always say the early 2000s are such an innocent time. It's like 9-11, like all this like war shit, like a, in the time, I'm sure it didn't feel like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. I f but why, like, why does everyone relate to that? I wonder what like the reasoning is. I guess just like liking the past better than the present. I don't know. Because it's not, it's like so dumb, but everyone does it. Well, a lot of people do it. So you're on board for daylight savings to be over? Um, yeah, I'm on board for daylight savings to be over. It would just be in like because I always love when it's light out for longer. Like at mm. eight o'clock, it's light out. I like it. Yeah, same. I'm down for it to be over. I know it's kind of just uh, yeah. I did find it annoying. Um, next important topic: Heidi Montag was seen eating a raw beef heart. Oh, I saw this. Insert the photo. Just take a good look. So she's like chowing down. It's in a Ziploc bag. Like the whole thing just. Ugh. Isn't there a diet where you eat raw meat? Yeah, apparently there's benefits, but I know she's doing it as a troll. Like it's 100%. You know what I mean? The oh, fact yeah. that she happened to get paparazzi, like it's all for a troll and I respect it. Oh yeah. Cause this is how I know it's for a troll because Heidi Montag, she's, she's obviously well known, but on my Twitter feed, I never see hear about her. No pictures, no anything. But then randomly this week, I saw a photo of her and it was like, Heidi Montag eats raw liver, like whatever she ate. And it was I'm like a raw that. heart. And that's how I knew some, like she paid people to take this photo and then like her publicist or something pushed it out because, because I never see you on my timeline. And then I saw on my timeline. That's smart though. I bet you right now TLC is like, okay, we're going to do a raw, a raw meat diet reality show. Do you want to do an episode? <laughs> Where they follow a new family each episode in their raw meat life. That's for I, sure going to be a thing. It's probably coming out this next fall. Eating raw how sounds like I actually would throw up if I had a bite of it. I know. I wonder like what the <laughs> I I like was because I've looked into it because um I did reacted to this wife swap episode like a couple months ago of this family who was a raw meat family. Yeah. And I googled it because I was like, is this like a legit thing? And apparently, yeah, there's not really any evidence, and it makes a lot of people really sick and stuff. Oh so, wait, so there's like no like actual evidence that it, like increases your calcium or some shit. I don't know. Apparently, they said like, yeah, it's not worth it. Uh, but if yeah. there's any raw meaters out, if there's any raw meat bro show fans, like let us know the benefits. There's so many weird diets, like. Even people that just eat meat. That's, like, weird to me. Like, all they eat is meat? There's, like, a diet. I just bought There's, like, a, there's <laughs> a diet where, like, people, yeah, just eat meat. Not, like, no vegetables, no fruit. And then there's a diet where people just eat fruit. Oh, like a fruitivore? Yeah. By the way, if I find stuffy, I have a cold, if you were wondering. Oh, yeah, Jacob has a cold, and I didn't get it. You were the carrier that gave it to everyone. I wonder. I went to uh, Orange Theory, so I might have gotten it. Well, I was going to say, like, you went to, like... I don't know. I was trying to think of like, oh, you went to like a basement orgy. Oh, I did that too. So I probably did get a cold. Yeah. I wonder if you go to a basement orgy Part of the you daily. just think like, oh, I'll get a cold. For some reason, I feel like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like, I, yeah, uh, I feel like getting cold <laughs> is part of life though. That's true. A good part of life. I fucking hate <laughs> colds. Like colds need to effing stop because they just come too often. Oh yeah. I've gotten, 
um, so many colds recently. I had, what the hell? Like, I got two colds within a month before Christmas. It's like, bitch, what? I'm done. Is it because we were wearing, like, masks and then, like, our immune system's lower than it was? I don't know. I feel like even before COVID, I was getting colds all the time. There's just too many colds out there. Yeah. Can we, we please stop? I want to eat Cheetos, but I also don't want to get colds all the time. Like, I feel like I get Cheetos colds get you colds? Yeah, because, like, they have no nutrition, you know? Oh, yeah. I'm joking. I don't eat Cheetos all the time. But, um, so yeah, just wanted to know if there's any bro show raw meat stands out there. Let us know the way. Yeah, because, I mean, um, although I find it gross, like, I, if you act, like, okay, actually, if you just eat, like, raw beef, don't even send us an email. But if you eat raw how and liver, that's when it's, like, I actually want to hear about it because it actually makes me want to throw up. I know, like, you're disgusting. Well, like, yeah, but, like, it's to the thing where it's, like, I guess, like, if you want to do it, you can. Oh, yeah, like, go off at your life, but also stop. Uh, like, we, when you eat a hout, though, like, you have to, like, hey, it's just, like, fucking, it's, like, hey, I guess that's what they did in the caveman days, so you can't really hate. That's, well, didn't, I think even then they cooked it with, like, fire. But maybe they didn't. Maybe some people didn't and, like, thought in villages or something. Guess we'll never know. But, um, also, it can, just a little, um, conspiracy moment. Um, Chris- conspiracy theory. Chris Jenner has a church I saw on TikTok. But this part isn't a conspiracy theory, right? Uh, she legitimately has a church. But people on TikTok are alleging. They're like, wait, is the whole entire Kardashian fortune getting funneled into this church, which is tax-free because religious buildings can't be taxed? Religious organizations can't be taxed? Is Kylie swimsuits line Kylie swimsuit lines finances getting funneled into it? The California Community Church. Yeah, so it's basically a church that Chris Jenner created, and but it's an actual church, like it's not just some fake thing. Right? Oh no, it's an actual church that, I guess, in two thousand and eight, Chris Jenner helped found it, helped find it. She's the founder. Sound like an actual dumbass. Um, apparently, yeah, it's a non-profit charity. Members have to pay a thousand dollars a month. And it's recommended that 10% of their income is a donation to the church. Which you could say, like, oh my god, how creepy. But aren't all churches kind of like that? Where they're like, aren't all churches, don't they have a recommendation? Like, yeah, give us, like, 30% of your money. Oh, yeah, I think so many churches have um, things where you can literally, like, like they, you can, like, literally have your, like, check from your work, 20% of it be, like, donated to the church or some shit. Oh, But isn't yeah. there, I don't know if you said it, but isn't it, like thousand dollars to join a month a thousand a month apparently which that seems weird because what i didn't even know churches ever had memberships it must just be isn't it probably just for some extra money chris jenner's like wow famous so someone's gonna pay oh yeah i mean with the whole tax thing i i mean if that is true the thing about it because if you were chris jenner i feel like sooner or later someone would find out about it and people hate the kardashians so much that wouldn't people like urge the IRS to be like find out what they're doing with the money but the thing of who I think knows like maybe they like do put not all of their money because that'd be too like I feel like if they were putting their money in they wouldn't put all the money in because that's mm. too risky I feel like maybe like out of the 300 million that the whole family owns a year maybe like 50 million oh yeah and then, for some reason I don't I don't know the TikTok theories that that they use it for tax deductions yeah, people or whatever on TikTok are like they are a they're like, oh my God, I think that they're putting their money in there. I just don't believe it. Yeah, because like you said, I feel like Kris Jenner is too smart. She's not going to try to pull it on in the government and have them all go to prison. You know what I mean? But, okay, this is, I don't really, who I think knows. I don't really like personally be like, they for sure did that. Mm-hmm. But this is what I want to know. So they have said that they're Christian before and stuff. But for some reason, I feel like there's like an advantage to having a church. I don't know what it would be though. I don't know. Like, I feel like they wouldn't Kris Jenner... Like, I don't even fucking know, but I feel like if you're making a church, there's, like, some, yeah, like... Maybe there's, like, certain there's write-offs. Like some, she can write off more money than if she didn't have it or something. Well, I guess it would just be, like, a charity, basically, because, like, church... Couldn't you say, like, church is a charity because, like, you're helping people? I, I don't... don't well, it says, yeah, it's, it runs as a non-profit charity, I guess. Oh, yeah, so... And don't so many celebrities have charities, so I guess maybe it's... Isn't it kind of... Like, couldn't you say the same thing for all of them? Well... I don't those charities like actually like like I don't like don't subbies make charities like cancel. But you could say like are they just funneling their money into a nonprofit or something? But I feel like this like it's not going towards anything. It's like with those it's like going towards cancel research. But with oh, this it's yeah. like 
But like, are you going to Bible research? Because I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it it does sound like so. If if for some reason they were funneling money, it does sound so stupid because like yeah. I feel like they're, they're famous. If they want famous, then it doesn't sound stupid because like who's gonna find out? <laughs> but they are famous, so. Oh yeah, I just don't get any of that because like. I don't even think they are doing this, but pe- for people who do try to pull stuff over on the government, it's like, is it worth going to prison? Yeah, I mean, the I thing about it. it, though, is that th- they aren't really, if they were doing this, they aren't only cheating the government because the government says, like, if you're a religious organization, you don't owe any money on the money you ha- make. Like, oh, s- like yeah. Scientology like, doesn't like, have you'd to be pay. I able to take money from a different business. That has nothing to do with the church. Well, so, like, maybe when you donate money to charity, I, I think it's, like, untaxable income. But then, yeah, I don't even know how that would work because, okay, so let's say you donate a million dollars to a church that you own, but then how do you get the money so you can spend it? Like, so, okay, that money isn't taxed, cool, but how do you get it? I mean, I don't, I'm not that, I don't have millions of dollars, so I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to say they aren't hiding money. That's my guess. I don't think it's a came, Cayman Island yeah, scheme. Yeah, we aren't alleging anything. But that is interesting. Like, I did oh, yeah, find I it to... awfully interesting. Yeah, I when I saw like, it on what? TikTok, I was like, oh, I have to talk about the bro show, you know? It was actually interesting because I went on, because you told me about this, and then I went on TikTok later that day, and it was like the fourth TikTok on my page. It was Mostly just like a guy the new saying, thing. like, they, they have a church. Do you guys think that they are funneling money into it? Did you read the comments? No. Oh, so I mean, yeah, I wonder, I wonder what people think. I feel like a lot of people probably do think they're funneling money into it. Oh, uh, yeah. But is it, like, public that she owns the church, or did someone just find out somehow? I think it's been known for a while. Like, I think it's just having its moment right now. But, yeah, people have brought it up before, like, oh, are they using this as a tax thing or something? Yeah. Like, it's because it's, she bought it in 2008. Okay. Yeah, I think she's a gal, like, of the public found, one of the public founders. Okay. That's kind of a cool, like, owning a church. And I want to <laughs> do that. Like, just buy a church. As a business? Would you have, like, it be Christianity? Like, I guess a church is Christianity. Or would you just make your own church? Like, no, make your own, like, religion. I think I would just, like, research the area where I bought it, like, what the most popular one is. Do a bunch of advertisements. We want to say thank you to Policy Genius for sponsoring this podcast. Having life insurance gives you the peace of mind to know that if, God forbid, something happens to you, your loved ones, your kids, they'll have a financial cushion to help them get through it whether it's the mortgage, the monthly rent, and just everyday expenses in general. This is how Policy Genius works. So Policy Genius is your one-stop shop to find and buy the insurance you need. Head to policygenius.com and answer a few questions, and in minutes you can compare personalized quotes from top companies to find your lowest price. You could save 50% or more on life insurance by comparing quotes with Policy Genius. The team of licensed experts at Policy Genius will help you understand your options and apply for the policy you choose. The Policy Genius team works for you, not the insurance companies. You can trust them to offer unbiased help and advocate for you at every step until you're covered. Policy Genius doesn't add on extra fees and has thousands of five star reviews across Google and Trustpilot. Since 2014, Policy Genius has helped over 30 million people shop for insurance and placed over $120 billion in coverage. So head to policygenius.com to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. Thanks, Chime, for sponsoring this podcast. It's a new year, which means it's time to leave behind the things that don't solve you, like overdraft fees. When your checking account balance is running low, the last thing you need is an overdraft fee. But with Chime, an award-winning app and debit card, you can save that hard-earned paper without paying overdraft fees. Eligible members can overdraft up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with absolutely no overdraft fees. Make your first good decision in 2022 and join over 10 million people using Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash Lucas Jacob. That's Chime.com slash Lucas Jacob. 
Banking services provided by and debit card issued by the Bank Corp Bank or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Eligibility requirements and overdraft limits apply. Overdraft only applies to debit card purchases and cash withdrawals. Limits start at $20 and may be increased up to $200 by Chime. See Chime.com slash SpotMe. Talking about strangers' money that we don't know anything about, we're going to go into the next topic. Grimes and Elon Musk. The richest, I don't know if they're still a couple, but the richest couple in the world. I guess they're living below the poverty line. And she said in an interview that there's weeks at a time where she has to live off peanut butter powder. <laughs> and I saw, I saw people were saying, like, just go figure. Like, the richest guy in America still has to live it like he's in poverty. That's how effed up the world is. But I just obviously. Wait, wait. Okay. Were those people that were tweeting that tweeting that as a joke? Oh, yeah, it was just a joke. Oh, yeah, like it's okay. A troll because, being like, you know what I mean? Oh, because I didn't know if in someone's world, they actually thought the richest man would be living in poverty. Because if you're driving around any city in America, there's like th- like hundreds of houses that are over like 800,000. So obviously people, there's people oh, that are living yeah. in poverty. No, they were just kidding. Just oh, like okay. Funny, like, I didn't know if for some reason people actually thought that. It was just like I a meme. I thought they were kidding, but I didn't know. But, um, yeah. So what are your thoughts? Um, Why are they so broke? <laughs> I feel like yeah isn't it just for like like even how Elon Musk said a couple months ago I don't even know if he said it or if just like one of his friends told the mm-hmm. plus he lives in a tiny house I believe he has a tiny house but like um, I think just one of those things where he just likes being um relatable even though he's the richest man in the world I feel like he just likes having like a Twitter fan base that kind of can relate to him that's so funny that's what I would assume at least or that's just funny thinking of like if they that just, I just, she said, I guess, um, I think she said, like, they, all of their money, like, goes into the businesses, so, like, yeah, they just don't have any, but it's, like, couldn't you just, like, like, I, even if, I just don't believe that they couldn't just go get a Subway sandwich or something. Oh, yeah, like, well, um. Living on peanut butter powder? I mean, I feel like it's a thing where it's, like, I, I, because he seems really, um, really, like, um, ambitious and stuff, so I, I believe that he put so much money into other businesses, but, I mean, it's, like, it's not even a question for me, like, obviously, I don't even believe they will, they, like, I don't think they, they lived in this tiny house either, maybe for, like, oh, a yeah. day he lived in the tiny, I don't know, I just don't believe any of it, but, I know, but, funny, I think Grimes is cool, and Elon Musk seems cool, but I, I think they just think it's fun seeming, like, like, trying to make people feel bad for them a little bit, which, oh, I mean, yeah. pop off to them. Yeah, go um, stream kill v mame. So they don't Grimes. live in poverty. I'm joking. What? I was gonna say listen to her music so they don't live in poverty. Oh yeah, but stream her they music. They don't even live in poverty. Please stream her music so they can afford more than peanut butter powder. I'm streaming it every day to try. So to she said that during an interview. Then yeah, I don't even know how it came up, but yeah, I just that was what I kept seeing on Twitter. People saying, "Oh my god, that's crazy." Also, um, <laughs> McDonald's. McDonald's, 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 McDonald's and a pizza hut. They're getting sued. What? Because I, you know how it's always a like joke that their ice cream makers are broken. That's always a, a common joke. Oh, yeah, for sure. The, why are the ice cream makers always down? Which like, why do you really happen to me cream? at any McDonald's. There's been a few times in high school where it was closed. Oh, my God, so it's actually a real thing. Yeah, like, um, even though it's a joke, I feel like it's, a, it's an actual thing. Like, well, for some reason, multiple McDonald's. It's like a, a coins where they just don't work. Oh, yeah. But the company, I guess the company that repairs the ice cream machines is now suing McDonald's for $900 million. Because, wait, so they repair the ice cream machines and then they're suing because they think McDonald's ruins them? They're alleging defama- um, defamation. Defamation. That's how you say That sounds weird when I'm saying it. Defamation, I think? Oh, that's why it sounded weird. Defamation. Okay, so so what does that even mean, really? I it's just like they're that. getting defamed by McDonald's because McDonald's. Oh. I guess McDonald's plays into the whole thing of the ice cream machines being down. So they're saying like, wait, you're saying that our repairmen aren't doing it right, which is ruining our business and stuff. So um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone knew about this business in the first place. Like, like know, no, but... no, this is what I'm saying. This business probably <sighs> makes millions a year. I'm not saying they're not successful. What I'm saying is that it's not like a famous brand. So like. So, like, I don't think they were getting, like, defamed. I don't know if it's deeper, though, because... Or defamate, whatever the fuck. They're claiming that McDonald's joined forces to drive them out of the marketplace. So, maybe it's deeper. Oh, so, like, maybe... Like, maybe it's not even a thing that I don't even... Like, maybe it's actually, like, McDonald's fired them when they had nothing to do with it or some shit. 
Oh, yeah, I feel like it was something. Maybe it's something different. Yeah, we're like, they're actually like trying to just completely destroy their whole business. Oh, okay. Because I thought it was kind of like this company is like jokingly sued McDonald's. But I'm going to sue them, I guess. Oh, yeah, it's like for a lol. <laughs> but I wonder how deep it went then. It must have been deeper, though, than what like we thought originally. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Maybe it was just because of the memes. They're like, are you kidding? I mean, well, I guess if you actually gigs. think about it, like everyone's saying like their ice cream machines suck, like. If you're known as the company that repairs the ice cream machines, who would want to hire you? I would think it's the ice cream. If I, for some reason, was going to blame someone, I would blame the people that made the ice cream machines, not the people that fixed them. I don't know. I feel like I would. If I was hiring someone for my business to fix, like, the dishwashers, and they said, we're responsible for McDonald's ice cream machines, I'd be like, mm, there's a lot of bad stuff around that. Bad vibes. Oh, uh, because people always say they don't walk. Yeah. So it's like, are my dishwashers going to be like that at my restaurant? Yeah, you brought it to that point. I didn't. I didn't think as a business owner. Yeah, like a chain owner, <laughs> like you own Chili's. Yeah. So in previous podcasts, we've talked about how Demi Lovato, in their show, they talked about how they were a remote viewer, tested it out. Basically, remote viewing is when you have the ability with your mind to go into just like the airwaves into the consciousness and the airwaves and be able like, so say someone is standing in a place and you're in a whole different separate location. You have to guess what the place looks like. And somehow with remote viewing, allegedly you'd be able to tell. Oh yeah. This isn't, I don't know if this is exactly remote viewing or if it's another Tom, but like a few years ago, I listened to this paranormal podcast and one of the episodes was about, I don't know if this is all alleged or if there's actual documents behind it, but the U.S. government or the CIA or whatever hired this guy that said he could. I don't know if, if this is still remote viewing or another term, like I said. But they they had him draw what he thought these other countries were doing or something or what their tactics. Oh my God, did he were. get it right? Um. So according to this, they they he did get some things correct, but they ended up just not um, using it because some things weren't correct. But there was, oh, yeah. I think. From what the podcast said, most of it was correct, but there's, like, no way to, like, get exactly correct. I mean, I would totally believe the government's looked into it because they're like, why not? They'd be, like, the best, um, that'd be the best war tactic ever. Be able to figure out anything any enemy's doing. So might as well, like, test it out. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, remote viewing. Also, hopping on the remote viewing train is Shane Dawson. In his new video, he tried remote viewing, which made me think. And it was kind of just interesting, like, um, Ryland and, like, um, Morgan and, and Ryland's parent mom were like thinking of stuff and then Shane would like remote view because I, I guess he took a class about it and he would like learn how to he would like think what they were thinking of so I thought we should we don't have any training but let's try it here on the pod it's kind of funny because I feel like even when we didn't know about this there's been so many times where, where, what it's like when we're with our family like okay I'm thinking of a number one through ten what is it that's like basically what like a version of oh remote yeah viewing. so we're gonna try it Live on the pod to see if either of us are psychically connected. Let me just think of what do I want you to see? <laughs> we actually have a notebook, so it feels like I'm actually like doing some stuff. Oh, yeah, because the creepy thing is you do like automatic writing, which have you ever heard about that? It's like, um, the only times I've seen it is like when I watched the psychic twins back in like 2015, they did a bunch of scribbling or something. Oh, yeah, classic psychic twins. Okay, okay, I have the photo up. I'm just gonna really focus on it. And apparently what you're supposed to do in automatic writing is like scribble and then you'll just have like random thoughts come to the sides of your mind. Okay. You know what I mean? Like you aren't consciously thinking of it. Well, like this is, this is what's happen, happening in my brain. I'm not saying I can see what you're seeing, but like just when I'm, when, when you put up a photo, like I just am imagining something and like who knows if what I'm even thinking is correct, but like that's what I'm doing. It's my, it's my method to this madness. <laughs> I'm looking at it. I'm looking at the photo so hard. Okay, let me send it to you. So right now I'm just writing a bunch of words. I'm looking at every little detail. Okay, looking at every little detail. So you're like sending it to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I think I'm done. I don't know okay. if that was like long enough, but I feel like I can't. My, my subconscious is cleared or my conscious is cleared. Okay, what are some? Did you write down words? Did you draw photos? What was your, what um, came out? I did words. Oh, or what were they? So, so I don't know if this is what you're supposed to do, but I, well, I just like, right when you got that picture, like, when we were doing it yesterday, this is what I did too. I mean, it's probably just my imag imagination, but, but I imagine like, so I put gumball, shiny circle, red, skinny legs, brown edges. 
Now, I just, like, pictured a gumball. And then I don't even know what show this is, but it's some Cartoon Network show. There's a gum- walking gumball. I pictured him, so I put skinny legs. <laughs> then brown edges. Um, I just thought of randomly. So what's the po- photo? You want to see? Yeah. Oh, it's a photo of Ariana Grande. It's the positions cover. <laughs> okay. Which uh, kind of is right. You said gumball. Like, she has this earring on that kind of represents gumballs. Brown edges. Her effing hair is brown. <laughs> skinny <laughs> legs. She's skinny. <laughs> I kind of feel like you did get... I feel like that's the thing at remote viewing. Like, apparently it's like your subconscious. So, like, your subconscious interpretation of this photo is that i guess well okay yeah because th- this is what this is what i was kind of saying that i was kind of saying that yesterday like so like if this is real mm-hmm. like because when you're when you think about in a grande i put shiny because she's like a celebrity so i was like shiny like diamonds so like that could be yeah something. i honestly feel like you weren't like completely off circle like what would circle well, her mean? face like it was a, it was a photo of a face which like in, like, the most basic form, if you're drawing the most basic stick figure, a face is a circle. You know what I mean? And then red, though. Oh, you said red? Yeah. I was hardcore looking at her lips, like, while I was named. Like, her, it was a black and white photo, though, so. Yeah, I mean, so in my head, I didn't even picture Ariana Grande. I pictured that one guy from that Cartoon Network show. But uh, maybe they correlate somehow in my head. Oh, yeah. The thing with remote viewing is, yeah, that's, I, like, want to believe it. But I also do think, like, even watching, like, the Demi and Shane thing. Like, I do think that, like, maybe if you write down, like, a hundred words on a piece of paper, like, you'll be able to put it together to match whatever you're looking at. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Part of me, like, does just, like, believe, like, oh, yeah, maybe somehow it does. It is, like, it. fun, though. Yeah. Okay. My turn. Okay. You, I would say you did pretty good. Um, Lay, let's, let's rate it. A three out of five. Honestly, yeah. for me, it's not that good, but kind of good. Do you have it? Are you looking at it? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to scribble and see So I'm just, like, looking at everything in the photo and, like, trying to telepathically send it to you. This reminds me of one of those dumbass documentaries. Guys, we're going to teach her to telepathically (laughs) say something. Yeah, this is hard. I feel like I'm not getting anything. Like, my mind, I don't know if it's closed off today, but, like, I'm not, let me just think. Like, really think of the photo. Yeah. I feel like before you were focusing on other stuff, like, just focus on the photo so hard. I'm focused. I am focused. Oh, right, this is what I have. Okay. Candy soda globe. Cat. I'm glad I wrote on globe because like <laughs> Wait. The thing I love about writing on globe though is like that could be anything. It's like, well it's on the globe. When you said um caught cat, you um said it in like a um New Jersey accent. Oh my god. So like, maybe like coming out? Yeah. Rollerblades and frog. So I Googled man. In moon, and there's this photo of the man in the Wee! moon. I said globe. <laughs> I know, but I, I, I know, mean, I'm not kidding. Like, I'm not even trying to be. A, I, I know I'm a total, like, complete bullshitter, but when I wrote down globe, I remember thinking, like, oh, I'm gonna complete X that whole thing out because I know it's not that, but like, I was in space already, and you showed space because, because when, when I think of a globe, I think of like the earth. Like the whole entire Earth, so like in a way, it could merge into the moon. Because the, the only moon thing is, Earth, nothing else goes into that. I wrote suburban candy, cat, soda, frog, roller. Were you picturing something, or do you just get words? Because I don't picture anything. I just, I just think, I just, I'm like scribbling, and I'm like, if I have like a random side thought, I write it down. Because every time I've done this, like the sixth time I've done it, I've just pitched. I already have something in my head that I'm pitching. Oh, really? Yeah. For me, no. Like I just, I'm, I just didn't blink. <laughs> and just um have like just whatever thoughts pop in you know but um when you were ju- when you were drawing things like did you get any creepy vibes because the photos are kind of creepy no because i was trying like candy and shit so oh, I, yeah. I really flopped but i'm gonna say i'm second because i five. did write i wrote globe though which is, that's a whole oh yeah and like the yeah just like i said like the moon is part of earth yeah and basically the globe like like that's why next time i do this i'm gonna write like everything because that's like well everything is everything you know <laughs> oh yeah just let it write everything and what's the word Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's eat it up one more time. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I want to do it again, but like, hopefully it's not boring to the viewers, but I want to keep doing it. Oh, yeah. I like, swear, like, this is the best like, road trip idea, guys. Oh, yeah. It's just pretend to be psychic. I know, because I swear like we all just think it's so much fun. Acting like we're like, yeah, I can see into another universe. Okay, I'm, I have it. Let me think of it so hard. Okay, when people do this, though, like on the Dummy Lovato documentary and stuff, um, do they close their eyes? Um, I don't think so. 
Oh, okay. But you could if you wanted. Because I low-key realized I was looking around and getting... Just looking around the room getting ideas? Well, like, well, like, and then I tried to, like, apply it to my conscious. I feel like you should just do whatever method comes to you, you know? Okay, I think I'm done. So I put gold. Okay. Um, but mid low because I was kind of getting this dark purple Halloween energy. Waves. Cool. Wait. Um, I, f- I feel like it's mostly, like, cool in a sense where it's, like, in the middle. Like, it's not cold, but it's not warm. It's, like, a good energy. Up arrow. I don't know. Wait! And, t- and then my last one was intertwined. Okay, I don't know if I'm just making up that you got this, <laughs> but first of all, gold. It's SpongeBob. He's yellow. And then didn't you say waves or something? Look at those waves above his shirt. Like, that's all. Like, his whole entire body is pretty much waves around it. Oh. And then you said pointing upwards. His hand is literally pointing up in this photo. And then even cool, like, I know you were thinking temperature, but, like, cool as in, like, SpongeBob is, like, one of those things that's, like, forever. It's been cool for, like, over two decades. What about Bat Midler, like, the whole that Halloween? That one, like, I didn't really get that. But also, like, when I think of Bat Midler, I do think of, like, SpongeBob. Like, not actually, <laughs> but, like, I could understand how, like, that would be in the same energy. The energy field is the same, you know? <laughs> oh, no. I kind of think this is, like, a really shitty one on my, my part. Wait, why? I mean, that's what it is, though. Like, even watching the Demi and Shane thing, like, that's what it is. You just say words and, like, it relates to it. It's not like you'll you'll never be, like, SpongeBob. You know what I mean? Well, if that's what it is, then, then I kind of think it's like just like you said earlier then like couldn't anyone do this oh but then i guess like if you train just get better you know well because like if i showed that table for a photo if you said like triangle i could say wait but like when you sit on it i do my i cross my legs in the little <laughs> that's what i mean that's <laughs> the thing about remote viewing is like if you dig deep enough like everything's right it is so fun though okay but that's... honestly i feel like you but do you not but you have to admit, you have oh, to admit yeah. that you I actually mean... even the upward sign like he's pointing up Okay, the up arrow, I'm going to say that's Even good. Even gold. Like the he's... gold, but the one that I think that you said is the waves one. I feel like the waves. But look at his body. Skin... His, it's not straight edges. It's literally waves. Or you could also apply the waves to him living in the ocean. Yeah, but even look at his body. It's That's literally waves. So go off. Okay, I'm a... I'm a certified, you can pay me $100 an hour to remote view your life. I know, so far, you're, like, you're doing way better. <laughs> okay, let me try to think of something. Okay. You have it? Um, Let me get pulled up. Okay, I have it. But then part of me thinks, not to interrupt your thing, but is is what I'm thinking of the photo coming through or is the photo coming through? Because I just realized whenever I look at a photo, I have all these ideas about it. Well, when I was looking at like the SpongeBob photo, I was like looking at all the details and stuff, like really trying to hone in on it all. But like, were you thinking of like what you think of SpongeBob? No, I was trying to just like focus on the photo. Oh, okay. Because maybe I put cool because, like, you thought SpongeBob was cool. Oh, I, I'm sure that wasn't in my mind somewhere. <laughs> okay, stop interrupting my fucking session. Yeah, I'm just going to write four things because I'm pretty – I feel like this is all that's coming through. Okay. The first thing that really came through was rocks and then pebbles and then blue and then psychedelic. Okay. So I flopped completely. Uh, well, you can look at it. So f- for me, for looking at the photo, I don't get any energy, but do you? Oh, no. So, for the listeners, it's a red... I typed in pink cocktail, like the jink. Um, and, yeah, it just it was a cocktail jink and then, like, a lemon wedge on the... A lemon l- l- pail on the top. But if I wanted to give build myself up, people always talk about champagne on the rock. Like, give me something on the rocks. Cocktail. And then I was also thinking sometimes, not with... I don't know if people do it with these jinks, but some people put, like, salt on the rims or, like, pebbles. Yeah. Of salt. So, like, I still think I was, like, I feel like my brain was, like, in the right place. Even the psychedelic, I feel like lately and, like, just the, like, things I've been viewing, like, people have been talking about, like, psychedelic bars. Like, oh, this bar has, like, a psychedelic vibe, which, that's, like, a thing. People are trying to make restaurants have, like, a psychedelic vibe. Oh, like, like, colorful. That kind of goes into the vibe. See, like, you literally, like, I could write down any words and somehow convince myself, like, I did it right. Yeah. I feel like when when I thought of remote viewing... Because I don't even know that much about it. I thought of this. Like, I thought someone would be thinking of something. And, like, you... It, w- it wouldn't be, like, you're just writing words. It would be, like, you're writing words, but you, like, know, like, the, the whole situation. Oh, yeah. No, because I, think- I feel like if you want to, like, accurately do it, I feel like that's what I picture. I mean, I'm assuming, like, if you really dive deep, like, and you kept practicing, isn't that eventually maybe what you'd build up to? Yeah, if if it's real. I, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not one of those people that thinks it's completely bullshit, but... I kind of feel like maybe some people are born with it. Yeah, to be honest, I don't really believe in it that much because I heard that there's this guy out there who um, is willing to give anybody out there 
completely non-biased, a million effing dollars if they can prove a supernatural ability. And so far, everyone's failed. So that just makes me think, like, is it true? You know what I, I mean? Like that doesn't prove that, like, all these things are fake, though. Because some people might just be too scared to do the challenge or this don't want to. Yeah, like, okay, and I know that, like, you could say this with a bunch of other things, too, but, like, it could just be simple as, like, I don't want to because it's, like, it's another world that I'm tapping into. I don't want, like, all this, like, superficial shit to be involved in it. Yeah. Because, like, you could call that so superficial and, like, trying to see if I'm fake. It just is bad energy for my soul. Yeah. I mean, I'm not psychic, but I'm saying, like, I, I feel like that alone doesn't prove. Yeah, just to me, it does kind of ruin it. That that someone did that and no one has come forward and done it. I watched a documentary about him. And he's like, because he's like, I think he's into it. Like, he wants it to be true. So he's like, if anyone can do it, like, I want to, you know. Give them the money. Should I actually Google it really fast? Yeah, because, I mean, I didn't even know about this until, like, right now. Because, so, he, if there was a famous psychic or medium or any of these people. He would personally tell them to do it. Because I never heard about this. Okay, I'm on the Wikipedia. It's the $1 million paranormal challenge, an offer by the James Randi Foundation to pay out $1 million U.S. million to anyone who could demonstrate a supernatural or paranormal ability under agreed-upon scientific testing criteria. So it's not like you'd be going into this thing not knowing what they're going to be testing. Like, you would... It has to be an agreed-upon criteria that you guys would do before going okay. in. Okay. So, like, how does science test it? I'm not saying I don't believe in science, but I just want to know, like, how would um, science I'll, test, like, medium abilities? Oh, you'll have to see. I'm sure they just do, like, a some sort of double-blind type shit, you know? But I guess the first version of the challenge was issued in the 60s, and over a 1,000 people who had... Who claim to have abilities? Oh, wait, it's been going on for like a. Th- that's probably why I haven't heard about it because it's like it's like a it's like a, yeah it's obviously a big deal because like it's yeah been going on for decades a thousand people applied and none were successful. But it says the challenge was terminated in 2015. Oh, why so it's it not terminated? a thing anymore. Yeah. So this foundation just really wants to like find someone that actually can do it. Um, I think I don't well, know when when I hear about it. I kind of get the energy of like, we know this is our bullshit, so we're trying to prove it's our bullshit. That's yeah. what I get the energy of, but I don't know. But has like um, anyone famous done it? Like, um, at, that's but, what I'm trying to see. Like Chris Angel or some shit. Oh yeah, I guess there's been famous psychics. Like a famous psychic in 2001 went on Larry King and said, "Oh, I'm down to do the challenge." Like they were all on board, and then they just like kept like backing out each time, and then she just never did it. I mean, but yeah, like this is what shows so interesting because why hasn't someone completed it, even though it got shut down in 2015? Yeah, I thought there was something about like the Teresa Caputo doing it. So with maybe psych- I don't think there is though. So if someone said the ability was being a psychic, it would be like a whole like five year process, right? Because um, you go in and then predict someone's life, but then like how do you? It says Ooh, that real. It, there's here's an example of a test. Okay, I want to hear. So the prize at the time of this in the 70s was 10,000. It wasn't a million back then. But the conditions were that a 10 by 10 meter test area would be used. There would be a water supply and a reservoir just outside the test area. What the fuck? Is someone thirsty? I am confused. Yeah, this seems too much going on. I, I, I didn't do any research. We just literally talked about this randomly, so... But yeah, there's apparently there's a whole entire thing about like how they did the tests and stuff. Okay. But yeah, yeah, it was through just like a control test. Like they would have a control group and stuff, you know. I feel like with the psychic one, they would um find a like find a way to do it to like have it done in a day. I wonder how they do that though. Oh yeah. Because you know, how, like psychic is the future. Yeah, maybe it would be really hard to test because like you're I don't know. I mean that's that's interesting that someone did that though because like I like because like you could like with with so many things that would be fun to do. I know. I I feel like Netflix or someone should buy like do that whole thing and bring it back up and like have people be tested each episode. I feel like that'd be so interesting to watch. Like people who are just fully like, oh, I'm a I've been doing this for years. Like I don't even care if I don't win the test, but I'm like fully a psychic. And then watching the whole test go down, that'd be so interesting. I feel like the thing about it too is that um like this kind of sounds silly, but even if someone doesn't pass it, like, I feel like there's still so many people, including me, kind of, like, well, like, it doesn't mean they're, like, bullshit. Oh, Even yeah. though a coin of science is bullshit, because, like, I guess with all this shit, it's, like, it's, like, this weird thing, like, you can't, like, prove it, even though they're trying yeah. to prove it in this. Yeah, so I feel like it wouldn't, like, tarnish your reputation. Even yeah, though, I feel like, Obviously, yeah, it people... would tarnish your reputation, but, like, it won't completely tarnish it. Oh, yeah. 
I feel like, like yeah, twenty five percent down. Because when they just say like, oh yeah, like the spirits that helped me or whatever, like weren't on board for the test. You know, there'd be so many easy excuses. Whatever they felt, I guess. Yeah. This podcast, thanks to one of the podcast sponsors, HelloFresh, for sponsoring this. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. You get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, all delivered right to your doorstep. HelloFresh offers the flexibility you need to easily customize your order online or in the app, and you can easily change your delivery day, food preferences, and plan size, or skip a week whenever you need to. And HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than a restaurant meal of the same quality, and you can save on average over $65 per month when you order HelloFresh instead of grocery shopping. That's money. Back in your pocket. We've both had HelloFresh before and it's always been excellent. I think what I love about it is that you get like 12 ingredients and it's pre-portioned, the perfect amount. And it's meals that I feel like most people wouldn't make if it wasn't mm-hmm. for HelloFresh. And they're, they're always meals that I've never had before. Yeah, like you would never even think to making them because it would seem too complicated, but they make it easy because all the ingredients are right effing there. Yeah, and it's fun making them. Go to HelloFresh.com slash BroShow16 and use code BroShow16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. America's number one meal kit. By the way, Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh. And with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. We personally love switching between the brands. And now our listeners can enjoy both brands at a discount. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey. We all love online shopping. I know I do. I pretty much buy all my clothes on there. It's the easiest thing ever. You can see so many options. You don't have to walk through a store. You can just sit on your couch and shop, shop, shop till you drop. I love it. Thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies to the best ones it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores online ranging from tech and gaming products to popular clothing brands, even food delivery. So this is how Honey works. Imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you get to the checkout, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for the site, and if Honey finds a walking coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. I was actually shopping for some music software things, like, you know, synths and stuff. Just, you know, a little hobby making music. Lucas is a musician. And a, 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 mu- a musician. <laughs> I thought you almost said magician. I know, yeah. Honey saved me $15 when I bought that music software. So go, Honey. It's so easy. Honey has found its over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the Bro Show podcast. I never recommend something I don't use. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash lucasjacob. That's joinhoney.com slash lucasjacob. Um, we haven't done voice models in a while, so let's well, listen to a few. We're just going to pull up a random one and see what happens. Hey, guys. So as soon as this happened to me, I knew I had to call you. Um... I'm talking to this person, um, and they want me to be their submissive, like a dom sub thing. I've never done that before. And honestly, it sounds like I'm making up the story, but I really, <laughs> I swear I did not. I couldn't make it up. Wait, okay, so they, they're they talking to a guy. And, and they the want to be wants... a submissive. Okay, so is this like a dating thing, or is it more of just a hookup thing, do you think? I don't know. Because when I think of it, I think of like... So, like, you just, like, do it for a few times? Or is it more of, like, for, like, for, for life we're going to do this? Maybe it's, like, a start as a hookup, and then it's, like, maybe we'll be, like, partners in this, you know? Yeah, dominant and submissive. So, the, the issue is that they're kind of giving you the ick. So, not to shame anyone, but <laughs> they are into growing. They want me to grow my bottom half of my body for them. 
the, like, my ass and thighs, I guess. But I already have a pretty big butt. Oh, my God. We just have to, this is a two-minute question, so let's we'll take another pause right now. Oh, okay, so when they first said growing, I thought they might grow hair, but they want, <laughs> this person wants them to have a big ass? I guess bigger ass and bigger thighs. No, my first thought when she said, when she said they want me to be, they want like to control my body and have me like grow the bottom half of my body. I thought like they might like stretch it out. Like do like these, like do like these weird, like torture things to like try to make their legs longer. And so I was like, girl, don't like, that sounds like dangerous. Also you, you like know your living life. When, when you're telling a story, you have to preface it by saying, by the way, like this honestly sounds fake. Like you're living life at that point. Okay, let's continue this voicemail. I don't really want to do that. Um, they were even asking me if I knew my measurements. And I actually am, like, going on a diet, so I already knew my measurements. But I told them, so I don't know if this means anything to y'all, but 40-inch waist, so I not waist hips. So I guess, yeah, I got a big butt, but... They were trying to get me to grow my butt. Mm, I don't know. But the thing is that they have a big dick, so... (laughs) Okay. I kind of want to see where it goes. But I know Benny Owens submissive, so... Yeah. Well... Thanks. I hope this finds you well. Love to hear your opinion. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Oh, my God. Thanks for sending that. We clicked on a good one. Okay, so basically, um, he wants you to be the submissive, and he wants you to grow your ass. Okay, right, so she said she already has a 40-inch ass, so she's like, I've already got, like, a dump truck in this house, but a 40 inch the ass. dom uh, wants it to be even bigger, yes. and she's like, I don't really want to do that, but she said he has a big dick, so she wants to. <laughs> I feel like my thing is, is that, like, <gasps> is that, like, Oh no! It's so funny because I it feels like I'm not talking about an actual situation, but I'm trying to like actually put to the situation because you said it's real. Um, yeah, this is what I think. Like, I thought this immediately. Like, um, if you don't want to go your ass, then don't. Oh yeah, but yeah, but, yeah. And then maybe I, there's a way to do it. And just be like, I want to. Yeah, I don't want to grow my ass. I already love my ass the current size. But can we still just try it? And if he's if they're really pushy saying, no, you have to do this and this, and you honestly don't want to, find someone else. There's plenty of other dom people in the sea, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. I feel like this isn't <laughs> the side of both This isn't the only big dick dom that you're going to find. Yeah, but to be honest, I don't really know anything about the whole, like, sub-dom community, so I don't really have any advice to offer. <laughs> I, how do you find them, I wonder? I don't know. What if there's, like, a certain app or something? Because this video that I watched a few months ago it was a... Uh, um, Christina Villegas video and she had her um stripple mom what is it called house stripple, mom stripple house mom on and she was talking about like types of um sex work and I guess there's like those groups that meet up that are like BDSM groups and like they like just like how do BDM must shit so it's like I wonder how it went down oh yeah oh, well, it could be so easy nowadays you just join like a local Facebook group and you guys are all just like BDM us people Oh, yeah, but let us know if you're listening. Let us know the update. What ended up happening? Did you end up saying, F it, I don't want to grow my ass? Did you end up making a meeting in the middle? What's, what's the update? Oh, yeah, I need because to, now I need to know. When was this voicemail sent? Um, I think like a week ago. Oh, okay, so it's still going on. I didn't know if it was like months ago. Oh, yeah, so. Yeah, Um. I mean, I wish you the best in your um Johnny. I know. But maybe this situation just isn't right. It sounds kind of, um. he wants like a lot of stuff and like kind of just sounds annoying but yeah you already have like such a you already have your dump truck and he wants you to get like a bigger dump truck and it sounds stressful to like you know what i mean yeah i feel like there's easier com easier um combinations there yeah will be. but thanks for sending that that was interesting should we listen to another one yeah let's pull up another okay let's see this one remember when we used to do drugs i was saying not to do too much do you recognize that? Yeah. Oh my god, um, that's Jacob's um original song. Remember when we used to do jazz? <laughs> I always say you need to do too much. I oh mean, I love god. that was a good voicemail. 
I love you need to make that into a song. That and sounds they, like a like just an alternative rock song. And they sang it in the voice, which I did like this one annoying as like this voice that is annoying that like I did. It's you're not annoying. It just like is annoying. I remember when we used to do drugs? I always say not to do too much. <laughs> You have to make that into a falling song. <laughs> Maybe I will. Oh That's my the God. only idea. Hey, girlies. Um, hey. So, like, I'm in a situation. Like, so I liked this guy for, like, the longest time. And, like, all of a sudden, he's just, like, being really fucking annoying. And, like, but, like, it's just so fun to have a crush on someone. Because, like, you know, the adrenaline, like, you know, stuff like that. But it's, like, I just don't know if I like him anymore. Because he's just being really fucking annoying. And it's, like, I don't know what to do. Like, because, like, I thought I was, like, over it. And then my friend sent my friend, one of my friends is friends with him. And she sent me, like, a video of him, like, being weird and, like, being funny. And I was like, oh, like, maybe I do. But I'm like, wait, no. Like, he's being fucking annoying, Abby. Like, calm yourself. Because um, he, like, keeps, like, nagging my friends for, like, like, answers, like, on the homework and physics. I know it sounds ridiculous. I'm, like, a stupid reason to be annoyed at someone, but, like, still, I'm annoyed, and I don't know what to do. I don't know if I like him anymore. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh my God. Was there a home phone ringing in the background? Okay. That's iconic. I, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know why, but for some reason, this one seems staged. <laughs> Wait, really? <laughs> because the home phone, but people have home phones. I know. Like, that brought me to a different dimension, hearing a landline in the background. I know. Okay, Maybe so. Maybe she was at work, and, like, that was, like, the oh, work yeah. phone. That, the, yeah, that, yeah, that's true. I, yeah, so I'm not calling bullshit. I just thought it was funny. Basically, they have a crush. They like the thrill of a crush. You know, it's just fun to have a crush. But then once it got to the next level, they found him annoying, I guess. Is that what it was? Oh, it, it kind of sounded like it never even got to the next level. Yeah, and he's like, like, he ended up just being annoying. He's annoying. But then she, one of her friends sent a video of him where he was like being like weird and cute. And she was like, wait, like, do I have a vibe? <laughs> and then she's like, no, he's fucking annoying. I have to remember that. Yeah, and the thing about it is that um, they actually sounded annoyed. Like when they said like fucking like, annoying, it actually sounded like I got a little bit like pushed back and like, I know kinda, like I was a little bit scared of you because there was a lot of madness in it. Because you were like you are severely annoyed by him. Yeah. But I kind of think that maybe you could just like have fun and like don't don't you could just tell him straight up be like yeah like I I don't want anything serious like I don't think we're gonna get like married or seriously date but I'd be down to like hang out just hang out it doesn't have to be anything too serious and obviously oh, you don't yeah. lead him on but you know. Yeah. You know, I don't think you have to put it. It seems like you kind of are still curious. Like, you know, go on a date. And, don't go on a date. Just like have a little hangout and see what happens. And if you think he's annoying, then just stop hanging out. Yeah, maybe it will be the point where I'll be like, okay, he's for sure annoying. Maybe I'll be like, oh my God, he's like the most annoying person ever, but I like him. It sounds like chances are he is just annoying though. Yeah. It, it sounds like it sounds like you were kind of forcing yourself to be like, do I come yeah. like Just for funsies. I'm like trying to convince yourself. Shits and gigs. <laughs> <laughs> You like ended up marrying him, and people are like, "How is the beginning?" And you're like, "I literally had to like manipulate, gaslight myself to like." I him. feel like some people do that, but like, um, I know so in like um cultures and stuff, you like you're like forced to get married to people, but I feel like, like arranged some marriage. Do this like an accident, have an arranged marriage. Oh my god, that's kind of funny to think about. People that did aren't even part of like cultures that there are arranged marriages, but like they accidentally were part of like because they just were like I like them, I guess, but they actually didn't. I know that's for sure. I think. I remember, I'm not gonna name names, but I remember I one time I asked someone. I just it was just I like was I just didn't know what to talk about, so I asked how they met their husband, and they told me I like they like forced they like said they had to learn to love their husband, and I was just like, why did you even get married? And they were like, they just said like, yeah, like he was an amazing guy. Like I knew it would be a good marriage, but I didn't love him. They said like I learned to love him though, and now I do. So like some people, yeah, you're right. They just straight up choose to be in arranged marriages. And when I'm thinking about watching. Um, real housewives. There's people that honestly do say that too. Like I feel like people yeah. have said on that show, like oh, I didn't like my husband, but now I do. I like I learned to like deal with it. Yeah, <laughs> it sounds like so annoying. Yeah, I mean I don't know if that's the right path. Like, didn't but... they say on like the one of the housewife shows they said like yeah like getting divorced sounds so annoying like dating all these like fifty year old men like I'm just gonna stay with my husband like it's not like it's not anything great but like it's something. <laughs> but <something's laughs> like, can you imagine him watching that? <laughs> yeah, whenever I hear that stuff, it's like. Wait, but like, why? I guess I've never been married for 50 years. But. <laughs> Let's listen to another one. I'm getting like a John Alinega. I know, these are good. Just like pulling one up randomly. Hey, girls. It's Ava. I go by they and she pronouns. Um, I made a little voicemail, I think like two days ago. But now I have a fun little topic that I want to maybe discuss with you. Oh my God, I'm so obsessed with you. Anyways, 
the topic is lucid dreaming. And I haven't had many lucid dreams, but I feel like it would be a really fun topic to hear you guys talk about. But I did have a crazy whack dream last night where there was bugs all over the walls. And they were crawling up my back, and I wanted to kill myself because that's fucking disgusting. And who wants to live with beetles stuck to them? Like, that's fucking disgusting. Anyways, I really want to hear some fun dream stories or, like, lucid dreams that y'all had. Just anything. Oh, my God. I love that. So you want us to talk about lucid dreaming. We, We have talked about this before, I feel like, right? We have. Maybe they haven't gotten to the episode yet, though, but they just, they might be psychic because you are like a lucid dream fanatic. I you mean, talked yeah. about it saying you want to do it. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I've like Googled how to lucid dream, but I haven't ever followed through for more than a couple of days. Yeah, so they probably like listened to the podcast and it's got a vibe that like lucid dreaming needs to be discussed. And also, they said they had a dream where bugs were crawling all over them and shit, and it was horrid. That does, like, like, I swear uh, most people have had a dream where snakes or bugs are calling on them, and it's, like, the grossest shit ever. Oh, yeah. But have you had any updates in your lucid dreaming journey? You said you... That's the thing, no. But you you inspired me. Now I want to um, start a, a journal. And, like, whenever I wake up, even if it's at 3 o'clock in the morning, and I remember my dream, write it down. Because that's the first step, right? Starting a dream germ- journal? Yeah. Um, does anyone else have this anxiety with journaling or journaling about dreams? Well, sometimes when you journal stuff, because I just pictured me doing a dream dream journal, sometimes my dreams are actually effed up. Well, me writing it down it actually gives me a level of anxiety, because, like, what if someone opens this? Because, <laughs> like, some like some dreams are just weird as fuck. Like, like yo, you're walking, and you end up, like, having a knife in your neck, and then you put a knife in someone else. Like, I haven't <laughs> had that dream. But what I'm trying to say is that I feel like some dreams are effed up, and, like, there's a certain anxiety of, like, writing down a dream because it's like, what if, like, I died to one, like, people are like, wait, he was, like, a, a psychotic mess. <laughs> no, this is a thing. I know I'm not but the guess, only like, who one. who gives a shit? Because, like, you'll, you'll be dead, you know? No, but, I, okay, but I know I'm not. You Have you had this? Because um, I've actually thought about this before. I, just, I have had that you before. Made me realize I'm just, like, annoyed. Email. I'm just annoyed if I journal because I'm just annoyed. Like, what if someone does read this? Because even though I'm not writing about anything that effed up, I'm just, like, I want to be able to just journal so freely that, like, no other human will ever read it, you know? Yeah. Like the, that amount of freedom, but you never really would have that amount of freedom because someone, there's always a chance someone would read it. And I guess at the end of the day, it's like, who cares? Yeah. The, yeah. You're totally right. Like who cares? And plus at the end of the day, even if you lived in the most crazy environment, no one's going to read it. If we're being completely oh, honest. Yeah, it's more of like, they're the creep for reading it, you know? <laughs> yeah. But that's a funny thing. Cause I feel like people listening have experience like, Diary and um, journal anxiety, whatever. The oh fuck. yeah, because um, isn't there? A, wasn't there a thing where iCloud or Apple announced like you can designate someone for when you die, they'll have control of your iCloud. So, oh. are you gonna designate anyone to yours? Um, no, I haven't yet. Have you? No, because I, I'm just like yeah. maybe if I was like 80 or something, obviously you, you could die anytime. But, like if I'm like 100, maybe I would. I mean, but to a certain point, like if I died and someone really wanted to look up my photos like couldn't they just ask apple like i guess no that this is this is the thing they said like they'll always protect people's data i guess oh. but um they said like yeah if you want someone to know he's like goalie apple we like know you're selling our data to get more money for us. <laughs> i would assume but maybe <laughs> they don't be like i think that'll come out in two years like pay 300 dollars and you'll be able to like see your dead loved one's data oh yeah like i mean to be completely honest like i actually wouldn't care like if like someone wants to look through my photos i don't really give a fuck Oh, yeah, no, I think it'd be cool. Like, that's that's the main reason for it, I feel like, is photos. Because, like, no one really has photo albums anymore. So, like, all of these memories and shit would all be lost. Which, like, they could go on to, like, family photo diaries, you know? Yeah. But, yeah, with the lucid dreaming, I don't have any updates. I still think it's interesting. Um, but, yeah, you should keep start, – you should start your lucid dreaming journal. No, start, start a lucid dreaming journal. Just journal your dreams. Oh, yeah, and let us know the updates. Oh, and then also, if you didn't know this, the person that sent the email is like, sometimes, it's like, right now, because I know this is reality, I pinch myself, and I can feel the pinch. But then, when you're in a lucid dream, you can pinch yourself, and I've never been in a lucid dream. I've never lucid dreamed, so I don't know what it would feel like, but it would be different, and you'd, you'd realize I'm in a dream, so I can do Have you ever noticed, you've, you've noticed you've been in a dream for like a millisecond, though, right? Okay, that's the thing, like... 
I'm just gonna say I've never lucid dreams, but I feel like there has been times where like it's this weird thing where okay, so I'd go I'd wake up, go pee, and then I go to sleep for like two minutes, but I swear like the dream like it was like a different type of dream. I don't know how to yeah, but I All guess right, that no, might I've, be what you're I remember, talking like, about. I think it hasn't happened recently. I remember when I was like a growing up I'd have these dreams because like even back then I remember hearing people say like if you could control your dreams, that'd be so fun because you can like do whatever, you know? And I remember there had been, there was times where I noticed I'm in a dream, but then I get so excited that I wake up. Because apparently that's like the heart. I remember when I read about lucid dreaming, like that's like a big block to go through. It's like when you realize you're lucid dreaming, like you're so excited that like you'd wake up, you know, but being able to like maintain calm so you can stay in it. Oh, yeah. I've I've also had dreams. Okay. I'm 99% sure I've never had sleep paralysis, but I've had dreams about sleep paralysis while I'm having sleep paralysis. So then I wake up. I'm like, wait, was that a dream or did I actually have sleep paralysis? Cause, oh, yeah. Because I'm, I'm, yeah, like I said, I'm 99% sure I've never had it. But these dreams seem so real. Like, it's like, so these dreams are in above view of me. And like, and I'm trying to wake up. And it's like, I can't wake up. <gasps> That's but, scary. But it was so in point. Was that dream not even a dream and it was actual reality? Because I remember watching a Shane Dawson video years ago. <laughs> well, he said, if you have sleep paralysis, you see an above view of yourself. But then it could be a thing where that was in like my mind. Like since you knew that, you created it. Yeah, like I mean, dream. I just think that whenever I, I've had like I, only like three dreams like that. But whenever I have them, it's like, what the fuck? That's just like weird as fuck. <laughs> but yeah, um, nice email. I, m- I might stop my journey again. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks for those voicemails. We'll have to do a full episode <laughs> soon or like dive into more. They give me like a journal link. It's like, it's so much, it's, it's way different than watching a YouTube video of like a story time. It's because it's like you guys are sending it to us. So it's like, I don't, it's like I know. So random. And then you guys are anonymous. So I feel like you guys can like fully just like tell what I know. I just like let it all out. Yeah. Little therapy session. Well, is that it? Yeah, I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Peace the F out.